Hey guys, here today with another Shuragarab knife. This one is on the F95 Icebreaker project, which you see right here in front of you. Now, as many of you guys might know, this knife is based on Sergei's original Icebreaker Custom, which is uh, one of his first customs, actually. Uh, it had a 5mm uh, ZDP-189 blade with a complex uh, dual grind and some really nice uh, blue anodized handles, uh, kind of faded blue anodization going on there. That really kind of evoked this uh, kind of ice theme. Later going in and taking a look to why he named the knife so, uh, I believe that there was some talk about him naming it so because uh, it resembled kind of the, the overbuiltness of the ships that were used in the Arctic to kind of break ice and make way for uh, other ships to follow in its path. And that pretty much satisfied my curiosity on the, the the choice of naming. However, with this product coming to this project coming to fruition, the naming behind it is actually uh, very interesting. Um, this knife, basically uh, being you know a, a production version of the custom, uh, the custom actually had a lot of history behind it. Uh, so going back all the way back to 1929, uh, in a off the coast of uh, Russia near the Arctic in the Chukoka region, there were two ships, one Russian and one American, that were basically stuck in the ice and unable to move. Because of this, both uh, the US and Russia organized rescue efforts to bring supplies to the two ships and also work on evacuating the crew members. Now, from what I understand, uh, the Russians were unable to find pilots that were up to the task of flying in these extremely, uh, in these extreme conditions, you know, heavy snow, blizzard, low visibility. However, there was one man by the name of Ben Eilson, who was a very experienced polar aviator. Um, he enjoyed flying in the these northern regions for fun. Um, he also where it was actually flying mail between, um, you know, cities in Alaska uh, and also founded the company, the, his own company called the Farthest North Aviation Company, of which I believe he was the only pilot of that company. So he definitely seemed like the person that would be able to pull this off. And uh, actually, he was able to make the first uh, successful flight over to the ships to supply um, food and also work on the evacuation efforts. However, on his second flight, something went uh, incredibly wrong. He did not arrive uh, as expected, and because of this, an international uh, search and rescue team was formed by the US, Russia, and some other countries to figure out uh, you know, exactly what was going on. Um, on the plane, I believe it was him and his mechanic. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they found him, his plane, and the remains of his plane, and also uh, <clears throat> Uh, ben and also his mechanic stuck in the snow so they basically had uh, a couple of ceremonies uh, paying tribute to his efforts uh, his heroism and um, the remains were sent back to america now fast forward to 2018 and we have now a uh, kind of a international effort to kind of pay tribute to this whole um, rescue effort that Ben had um, so so richly dared to offer up his a life for. Now the flight consisted of 18,000 kilometers of flight around the Arctic Circle visiting um, many countries, um, including Alaska and America, Canada, Finland, and then eventually returning back to Russia. Now, the interesting part and how this all ties into Shurogorov is the fact that uh, with those, with that international team of aviators who were flying in this uh, amphibious aircraft, there were actually nine Shurogorov knives that were carried aboard by these aviators. And one of them happened to actually be the Icebreaker Custom Knife. Um, I'm not sure, uh, again, I, I can't go and say that the knife was specifically made for the project, but um, very interesting coincidence of, you know, the naming scheme, the fact that the ships were stuck in the ice, this whole rescue effort, and um, the name Icebreaker. 
But anyways, that is the backstory behind this knife and the reason why this project comes with this very special bead here. So let's go ahead first and take a look at the bead. Now the bead has the Shirov logo and it says World Oceanic International Flight. And on the back, you can see it has a picture, a uh, laser engraving of the amphibious plane that was used in the Tribute flight in 2018, as, long, as well as the, the path around the Arctic region where the planes uh, flew for those 18,000 kilometers. So this is really interesting to me as uh, someone who really uh, pays attention to kind of the, the history of the Sugar of Knives and um, how it all ties together um, with, you know, the names chosen for the customs, small things like that. Um, this, this is incredible to me uh, to find out that this information was uh, kind of unknown to me for or an, and everyone else, I assume, for, for so long. So really amazing story behind this knife. Uh, and uh, this bead is incredibly unique. Um, it's it's larger than the normal shirt rod beads. Uh, and again, just, you know, taking a look at this, it, it's completely, you, you want to know exactly what's going on uh, without knowing this whole backstory, which I think is amazing. But anyways, going on to the knife, uh, there's not too much to explain here. I mean, well, let's go over it first. Uh, since this is a, an F95, I won't really go too much into the sizing of it, since I'm sure you guys pretty much know what the F95 size is all like. But uh, let's take a look here at the blade. Now we have this the uh, the original F95 profile, which is uh, much more flatter here in the belly area. However, we can see that it does have the new updated jimping that we saw on the F95 anniversary, and also on the new F95 NLs where it has this uh, more pronounced um, deep engraving here that uh, separates the, the jimping area, what they call the extract cut, from the rest of the blade flat. Moving on to the hand, oh, and uh, last I want to say the steel is S, uh, M390. Um, nothing too special there, so, but let's go ahead and take a look at the handle. The handle, again, has the same milling pattern as the full custom icebreaker that came out uh, many years ago. Uh, the handle is pretty much a faithful representation, uh, except there is no anodization that I can see. It's pretty much a plain titanium handle here. Um, some of you astute viewers might notice that this wave pattern actually is the same pattern that's used on the Hati. Now, being in titanium, you can really see how this pattern um, actually kind of propagates from this top left corner. And now it really makes sense to me. Now, as you can see, it looks like it's kind of fanning out from the top left corner. But if you take a look here on the edges here on the right side, you can see that the spacing for the uh, lines is actually the same as on the left side. Now, how is that possible? Um, with kind of the busyness of the weave of the carbon fiber, I was never really able to figure out exactly what was going on. But now that it's in titanium, you can actually see that from the kind of first in between the rows of the milling on the left side you can see that the rights you can see that um additional rows starts to grow from inside the middle of these rows that uh, kind of make up the lines that end up on the right side a little bit difficult to explain but as you can if you can take a look here at the right angle you can see how the rows kind of split up in half and create even more rows here on that left side. So really amazing work here. And uh, kind of another little mystery that's solved, because I always thought that was really amazing, how the pattern looks like it fanned out, but at the same time was also um, very homogenous in terms of the, the spacing on the milling. So incredible there. Now this knife is 2D uh, machined. Uh, there, there are these, uh, I guess you call them extract cuts on the handle where the logo is uh, milled here. And uh, again, this is exactly like the Custom. The Custom technically was a 2D knife being uh, such an early knife back then. Um, we then move on to the backspacer here. The backspacer is of that new type that we see on the updated F95 uh, NLs. Has that uh, kind of tight jimping pattern that seems to be unique to this knife as of now. 
And this really uh, pretty much marks the end of the lanyard loop on the show side for F95s, which I think is a good move and something that a lot of people have been asking for is having that backspacer, that more premium um, method of attaching a lanyard. And it does give us a place to uh, kind of give a, a spot of color here, uh, being in that blue. Uh, same thing with the original custom as well. Now, as you notice here, it is using the smaller uh, rear screw that is on the uh, Quantum and the F3 NS. So you will require a new bit for this. Um, the older F95 uh, rear screws or Hati or 111 will not fit as this is just, uh, actually, I think, uh, I, I believe actually the, the bit will fit, but the screw itself is not interchangeable. Um, what this reduced screw diameter means though, is that this, this, uh, the female side of the Chicago screw will actually come out. As you can see, the clip does not impede the removal of it at all, which I think is actually the main motivation behind making the rear screw smaller in the first place. Now, if we go ahead and we take a look here on the other side of the knife, the lock side, you can see we have the lock bar cut out, which is pretty much here to stay. Um, it being on the um, outside as opposed to say on like the inside of the old style F95s. And we can also see this milling pattern kind of continue on the other side as well. What we do notice as well as uh, the clip has been updated, you can see that again, like the F95NO, it has this very subtle, very tight milling pattern here on the bottom half of the clip, which I think is just excellent. The clip has been updated. Um, it has one point of contact with a large patch, which uh, actually works very well in the, in the pocket. Uh, actually, no, I believe this is the same clip design in terms of the contact, just we have uh, the old clip here as opposed to the new clip. I think the new clip is, uh, is very well designed. I like the lines a little bit better, especially with that milling here. And lastly, I just wanted to bring focus to this new larger pivot, which we're starting to see in more and more knives. It's nice to see the F95s, uh, this one and the F95. Uh, the new NL coming with these larger screws as well. Um, hopefully we can get those eventually in the neon as well. But um, in the meantime, it's nice, it's, it's nice to see the screws uh, all coming together. When the Quantum first came out uh, and then the F3NS with these larger screws uh, kind of created uh, an area where, you know, the workshop is sending out knives with two different screw sizes. But now it looks like they're, they're finally starting to bring it into the F95 and eventually the Hati as well. Now, overall, my feelings on this knife, um, it, there really isn't too much to talk about the action since, um, by and large, it's completely, uh, a, you know, it's an MRBS knife. It has the same milling pattern on the inside with that wave in the middle, um, but, you know, just slightly different to accommodate the backspacer. And uh, th again, there isn't too much to report. The detent on these uh, production knives has been much stronger which I think a lot of people like that stronger detent. Um, there also is much less, um, I don't know how I'm going to say, when you squeeze a lock bar, I don't, I don't know what I want to call lock rock since there is no blade play, but um, the lock bar insert is much more hard fit to the, the tang of the knife, which a lot of people like. Um, these examples are, again, very indicative of the newer productions, and uh, I wouldn't, if you're used to handling a production F95, um, you can expect the same quality and assembly and action in this one as well. Just with a really nice lanyard uh, with bead and uh, a lot of history behind it as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Um, not really a review, but kind of just uh, an introduction to the knife and uh, kind of some highlights on some of the um, special features of this knife that make that makes it stand out a little bit from the other production 95s and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys next time.